Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Enjoy learning computer science. To watch my previous videos, watch my YouTube channel. To get notified for my new videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Enjoy learning computer science. This video is part 12 of computer networks, which is a comp uh, which is a continuation of the previous video part 11 network topologies. So network topology is the way in which the computers are physically interconnected to form a network. Now, the decision to select a particular topology, particular topology means different types of topology. What are the different topologies we have studied? We have studied about bus topology, star topology and tree topology. Right. So, the decision to select which topology for a network depends on some factors. Okay. So, the factors, uh, uh, some factors like cost, flexibility, reliability should be taken into consideration before selecting a topology. Let's see those factors. So, the first one is cost. Okay. So, cost signifies that the network should be cost effective. So, what is cost effective? You should not spend more while selecting a network. It should be uh, cheap, it should be reliable and safe also, right? So, cost means it should, the network which you are selecting should be cost effective. So, for this, it is required to minimize the installation cost. And this can be done by selecting an economical transmission medium that is wires which wire has to be selected for particular number of computers economically that has to be taken into consideration for data exchange between the network nodes the network cost can also be minimized by reducing the distances between the nodes okay so this is an important factor should be that should be taken into consideration before selecting a topology the next factor is flexibility so flexibility signifies that the network must be flexible enough that is it should be easy to extend or reconfigure okay and uh, reconfiguring a network means to rearrange the existing networks or to add or uh, remove some uh, one or two nodes in the network okay so flexibility is also very important that should be taken into consideration before selecting a topology and the last one is reliability so reliability refers uh, to the degree of trust that can be placed on a network uh, like any other system a network uh, can also encounter for failure right so a network failure can occur due to when an individual node stops working or when the entire network for, uh, get falls so reliability is very important while uh, uh, while selecting a topology so the factors uh, uh, sh that should be taken into consideration before selecting a topology is cost flexibility and reliability and one more thing uh, one more uh, term that is point to point link you should know uh, while using network topologies so point to point link that is also known as pp link okay so, it is known as a dedicated link which is used to connect two nodes in a network, okay. A point-to-point -point link is known as, is also known as a dedicated link and it is used to connect two nodes in a network. So, the function of a point-to-point -point link is to send and receive data over a network. So, in a point-to-point -point network, each workstation receives data from only one transmitter and each transmitter transmits data only to one receiver okay so the simplest way to install a point-to-point -point link between each pair of computers over a network so point-to-point -point means it is also known as a dedicated link and it is used to connect two nodes in a network now we are going to discuss about types of network uh, a computer network may be small or big depending upon the number of computers and other network devices linked together. So, networks vary in size, complexity and geographical speed. So, a computer can network can be on a table or in a room or inside a building or in a city, country, across continents or around the world. It can be anything. So, on the basis of geographical spread, networks may be classified as PAN, LAN, MAN and WAN. First one is PAN. PAN is Personal Area Network. 
personal area network so networks of communicating devices like computer phone mp3 etc okay so pans are very small networks used to establish communication between a computer and other handheld devices within 10 meters using wired usb connectivity or wireless systems like bluetooth or infrared now pans are used to connect computers laptops mobiles uh, and other small devices to transfer files including emails uh, digital photos audio and video etc etc but the bluetooth technology implements pan a personal area network pan may include wireless computer keyboard and mouse bluetooth en enabled headphones wireless printers and tv remotes so the network that belongs to a single person or user with up to 10 meters is known as pan lan that is local area network is a privately owned computer network covering a very small geographical area like a home or an office or a building such as a school and it can cover an area over a few meters to a radius or a few kilometers so one to ten okay so a land can span a group of nearby buildings occasionally mm, a land is owned or controlled and managed by a single person or organization a LAN can be set up using wired media like UTP cables or coaxial cables, etc. or wireless media infrared radio waves. So if a LAN is set up using unguided media, it is known as WLAN, that is wireless LAN. Okay. So if, it's, if a LAN is set up using unguided media, that is wireless, it is known as WLAN, that is known as wireless LAN. The key purpose of a LAN is to share resources devices like printers softwares whatever it is lan users can share data programs printer disk modem etc and uh, the data transfer rate speed over a local area network can vary from 10 mbps to 1 gbps so lan is a privately owned computer network which covers a small geographical area and it is managed by a single person or organization and it can set uh, it can be set up using wired or wireless media now man metropolitan area network a network of computing or communicating devi devices within a city so it is larger man is larger than a LAN and can cover a city and its surrounding areas a man usually interconnects a number of lands and individual computers. It also shares the computing resources among the users. All type of communication media guided or unguided are used to set up a man. A man is typically owned and operated by a single entity such as a government body or a large corporation. A good example of a man is the interconnected offices of a multinational corporation or cable television networks available in the whole city the next one is wide area network that is WAN it is a telecommunication network so wide area network is a telecommunication network and this type of network spreads over a large geographical area across countries and continents uh, and these bands are generally used to interconnect several other types of networks such as LANs, MANs, etc. And they facilitate fast and efficient exchange of information at a very high speed at the same time low cost. A band uses common carriers like satellite systems, telephone lines, etc. A band can cover an area with a radius spanning hundreds of kilometers. A network of ATMs, banks, government offices, international organizations, offices, etc. spread over a country, continent or covering many continents are examples of WAN. Then for WANs, all types of communication media, whether it is guided or unguided, are used to set up. The best known example of a WAN is the internet. The internet is the largest WAN spanning the entire planet. So a van interconnects all the computers across the world. 